Hey everybody, it's Glenn. Back in this video is my reviews of the best of Marvel Legends, Movie Avengers, Hulkbuster, Wave, Roll On, and ain't I a tease? Making you wait for Loki, but all good things come to those who wait, my friends. But first, let's delve into Hawkeye. There he is on the package inside up, but whatever you do, don't make eye contact or I'll invite you to his country house to meet his wife and kids. So boring! Then the packaging back features the briefest of bios, just a single sentence, an expert archer Hawkeye uses arrows to take down his enemies from afar. He does what it says on the tin, basically. Then Hawkeye is pictured alongside the rest of the wave and also the Hulk buster builder figure of this series. So here he is out of packaging, and for those among you who have been around the toy block a time or two, you may want to sit this one out as he is exactly the same as the version from the Amazon exclusive box set that I reviewed last year. Yet for all those who have joined me since then, let me catch you up. The Amazon version and this newer one are mostly the same as the six inch version that was released to accompany the Avengers movie as a Walmart exclusive. The key difference between that first one and the subsequent two is the head sculpt with the Walmart one receiving sculpted on shades. Then they're without the shoulder harness strap thing that the first Walmart version has as you see on the right of the screen there and beyond that all other differences are purely down to the deco. And so it is in being identical to the Amazon box set version, it presents exactly the same problem and that's to do with its proportions. I just feel the torso is very extended, the legs quite short, the arms long, leaving the hands hanging quite low in a King Louis from Jungle Book fashion. Unless of course Jeremy Renner is actually oddly proportioned and I'm criticizing Hasbro needlessly. Taking a closer look and being more positive and I like the contrast between the shininess of say his boots the knee pads and the straps and the flat matness of his trousers, plus some really detailed sculpting in relief to the top capturing the surface of the various textures of his tunic. Now we all know that Hasbro liked to save a fraction of a cent when they can and I did get suspicious that they didn't continue that burgundy colour on the front of the tunic onto the reverse but having researched online and it seems it is a flat grey colour the back of his costume there. As for the head sculpt, I really like the hair. They've sculpted some really nice texture to it. It would benefit from a wash or some dry brushing to make it more tonal, but that goes back to Hasbro trying to save a fraction of a cent where they can. And without the Walmart one shade, sure he's less cool, but perhaps more essential because he racks up more screen time without the shades than he does wearing them. Would be nice if they included that Walmart head as an interchangeable head here though. As for the likeness, I think it's serviceable. I mean, in the big scheme of things, compared to the Age of Ultron cap, I see more Jeremy Renner in this likeness than I do Chris Evans in that one, that's for sure. For accessories, of course, he comes with his bow and a quiver full of arrows, because without those, the guy is just a guy. I do like that with the quiver, they've at least made a token effort with the deco, applying some of that burgundy colour to match the costume. Of course, with Marvel Legends, this is certainly not the debut of this bow and quiver. Frankly, they're disappointing accessories with the arrows stuck in that quiver, and you have to go back to the Toy Biz days. <laughs> some real decent Hawkeye accessories when we got individual arrows and a bow that actually fired them. But back to talking about what we actually do have and the quiver plugs into his back. As for the bow, well we're going to take a look at articulation to see if we can get him into any decent archery poses. So his head does rotate side to side but there's no neck hinge so no up or down movement of the head. Then at the shoulder the arm rotates and it moves up to almost a right angle to the body. There's upper arm rotation followed by a double jointed elbow. Then the hands rotate at the wrist and his left hand is hinged on the inside and outside whereas his right hand is hinged on the bottom and top. In lieu of waist rotation he has a rotating diaphragm joint which also pivots side to side and this is able to move well a little bit forward and only really the tiniest bit back. At the hips his legs move out to the side a real decent amount. They also move forward and then well they move the tiniest bit back. There's upper leg rotation and a double jointed knee and then at the ankles the feet are hinged moving backwards and forwards plus they have that crazy ankle rocker pivot that I love. Regarding all that poseability when I previously reviewed the Amazon version I was critical of it saying that this was the best archery pose I could come up with. 
only to be tackled in the comments section of that video, saying it's not the posability that's to blame, but my own posing. So this time around, I admit Richard was right. It was a case of a bad workman blaming his tools. And I have to say, now having stretched myself and Hawkeye into this pose, he is one of those instances of Marvel Legends only truly coming alive when you pose them. So yeah, seems third time's a charm for this Hawkeye, as this is the highest level of appreciation I've had of the action figure. Anyway, click this video if you missed my previous one featuring Black Widow, and as I know many of you are itching to gawk at Loki, I'll be banging out Iron Man and War Machine in a two-in-one action figure review next time, so stay tuned for that. Give this video a big thumbs up and I hope to see you all next time. Mm, bye.